So my second law is, uh, <laughs> have you ever had one of those days where you come into work and somebody's thrown away all of your lab equipment that you were planning to use that day? I just had one of those days. Imagine this though, it's my fault. That's even worse, right? So consider this. Here, uh, <clears throat> here's my, oh, sorry, I've gotta go. Net force is mass times acceleration. And I guess I wanna start talking about what if stuff is not accelerating. But if a equals zero, now let's get down to it. If A equals zero, then mass, whatever, however big your mass is, if A is zero, your net force has to be zero. So if A is zero, then net force is also zero, and I'm gonna call this equilibrium. I think you should put this in a box, because it's so important. Put this in a box in your notes. Equilibrium is the state of having, well, I guess you get, a equals zero, and you get net force equals zero, and I guess that's because net force is mass times acceleration, so those have to both be true at the same time, but if acceleration is zero, let's say you're not accelerating, right? That means that you could be still, like this cat, for instance. Yeah, it would just be sitting there. It also could mean that the cat is moving steadily, like this cat. See that cat moving steadily in one direction at a constant speed? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. So what I should say is equilibrium has those things and, oh right, because acceleration, let's say average acceleration is delta V divided by delta T, then I know that if acceleration is zero, then delta V must be zero. If delta V is zero, it doesn't mean that V is zero. Because delta V, oh, watch what delta V is. Delta V is V final minus V initial. So that just means that those two, wait, if this is zero, zero equals V final minus V initial, then I could add V initial to both sides and I could say V initial is V final. So all I'm saying is that velocity is steady. Mm, probably do that in uh, copper, yeah. Velocity is constant. So I do not mean that the thing is stopped necessarily. I'll put that in parentheses. Could be stopped. If something is stopped and just sitting there, then it's not accelerating. But uh, I guess I'm saying that if the velocity is constant, then I know I've got equilibrium. So that's my equilibrium box. And it says that the net force on something is zero when the acceleration is zero and the velocity is constant. This is a very important concept to wrap your head around. So I'll do a little example that usually pisses people off a little bit. And we're gonna go back. Oh boy, this will be really exciting. Watch this. Watch this. I have a cat. And I'm exerting a constant force on the cat. I'm pushing the cat to the left, right? And everybody's saying, wait a second, I thought F was MA if F is MA, then that cat ought to be accelerating because there's a force on it, right? I'm pushing the cat to the left. Why is it moving steadily? Why is it in equilibrium? Because I thought that I was pushing it to the left. And the answer is something else. Let's draw a quick picture of that cat. Uh, let's see, head, body, some legs, cat tail. Uh, that must be its collar right there. Um, okay, <clears throat> the cat's being pushed, and this is a top view because the cat's lying down like a cat, and though there are forces up and forces down, and I don't want to talk about those, but I'm pushing the cat this way. I'm gonna call it F app, the applied force from me. There's another force on the cat that must be backwards, and who wants to guess what that force is gonna be called? I'm gonna call it FK, which is the force of kinetic friction. And the cool thing is those two forces must be exactly the same length because I know that the cat's not accelerating. So this is an interesting way to look at Newton's second law. It says, I'm looking, oh, did I tell you? I have this engraved on my bicycle. It's pretty awesome. <clears throat> it's a very important law. Oh, also, I will, um, if you are one of my physical students in my classroom, I will sign as your parent. I will take you to a tattoo parlor if you want to get that tattooed on yourself. Uh, so what I've got standing offer, if, um, if the cat's here and I'm pushing the cat that direction, then it is not accelerating because there's no net force on it. So maybe I should look at it the other way. There's no acceleration and therefore there's no net force. So what I can say is the net force 
equals zero, so the net force is, well, let's add up those forces. First, I gotta define some directions. Let's put y that direction and x that direction. So there's a positive force, which is fk. It's going in the positive direction, so I write f K, and then I have to subtract this force, which is the wrong direction. I was pushing that cat the wrong direction. You know there's only one direction, the band. And this is the applied force, and it's equal to zero. So the neat thing is, we've just created this equation. We, cre we made that equation, okay, cool. And I can solve that for FK. You wanna know how much friction was on that cat? Well, I'm gonna tell you that the friction that was on the cat was exactly the force that I was applying to the cat. Notice we haven't put vector hats on here because we're talking about their direction by putting minus signs in front of them, those would be at the positive x direction, or putting um, positive signs in front of them, those would be in the um, negative direction. Minus ch, that way, positive ch, that way. Oh, 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 oh. This equation that says net force is equal to zero is actually two equations. It says net force in the x direction equals zero and net force in the y direction equals zero. And in principle, it is also saying and the net force in the z direction equals zero. But give me a situation in first year physics where there are three, three distinct dimensions of forces. I'll be pretty impressed. All right, goodbye. Sorry, a little bit more. Me and this excited kid were just talking, and isn't that right? Yeah, that's true. We were talking and we were just thinking that maybe you didn't fully grasp the significance of my first law. My first law that stuff tends to keep doing what it has been doing, and it can be summarized in the single word inertia. So I want to explain to you that my second law has my first law built in. Net force is mass times acceleration. So I guess what I'm saying here is we could solve this sucker for acceleration. Let's solve this sucker. It says acceleration is net force divided by mass. <coughs> Excuse me. So, if you've got more mass, then you have more of a tendency to not have acceleration. There's an inverse relationship here. For a given force, the more mass you have, the less you will accelerate. That's the concept of inertia. And I also wanted to point out that we said another way of saying Newton's first law is that uh, an object at rest tends to stay at rest and an object in motion tends to stay at motion with a constant velocity unless acted upon by an outside force. Unless acted upon by what? A net external force? Yeah, if there's no net external force, then there will be no acceleration. And that's the idea of an object in motion staying in motion because delta V over delta T is average acceleration. And in that case, it will be zero. So if net force equals zero, then change in velocity equals zero, and an object in motion tends to stay in motion, and an object in rest tends to stay at rest. Hope that's all coming together for you, that Newton's first law is a special case of his second law. But look where we would be. If we didn't have his first law, we couldn't build up his second law, and just wait till his third. Ooh.